don't complain and say this area this area this area is not working in my life i am telling you once you see a bankruptcy of results perpetually there may be demonic things there may, but the chiefest explanation is that the grace connected to that result is not yet in your life or is not yet activated in your life when you know this like peter you will become by mercy a steward of the manifold graces of god so the wealth of your christian experience becomes the result of your journey of picking the various graces that are needed for the profiting of your adventure so here's how it starts you got born again look at me you got born again empty void of anything full of the life of god but that potential has not been released as you journey through humility you carry wisdom you carry favor you carry speed are we together you carry influence you carry the grace that activates the gift of men by the time you are five years in the faith you are not alone again you have outsourced many mysterious graces this is what defines the quality of your christian experience someone will meet you and say we were born again at the same time but did you carry the same grace did you activate the same grace if the answer is no then that becomes the explanation to your stuntedness spiritually apostle the ministry is not growing i sympathize with you and i understand sincerely but i can tell you by grace by mercy and by experience there is a grace that is not at work in you that is responsible for drawing men that grace is called anakazo it's a compelling power it doesn't draw nigerians it draws men anywhere god gives a command that grace answers it doesn't matter where reinhard bonke carried it tl osborne carried it maurice sorulo carried it it didn't just work in Africa it worked everywhere God sent them when you carry it it works for you anywhere within your territory outside of your territory you see it will look like you are the center of attraction but the truth is that you are not that spectacular as a person it is the grace the people who listen don't even know what is drawing them but it is the grace let that grace lift and you will be surprised that as much as you believe you are spectacular you are not that spectacular it is the grace that amplifies you and makes you such an object of awe. this is the reason why when God does the things that he does we are wise enough to give him glory because our sufficiency it's not of ourselves <laughs> it is of god who has made us stable ministers not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit gives life as much as i'm an anointed man of god by the privilege of god's mercy it is not every grace you need that i can impart upon you i am on a journey myself to accessing certain superior graces that would be important for this ministry for my life at a higher dimension tomorrow are we together now this is the reason why god gave a distribution of graces across the body there is nobody who single-handedly answers to all grace as an individual only the holy ghost can do that and because the holy ghost lives in men and he operates that grace through men dimensionally you can benefit from all grace you should benefit from all grace but until you outsource those graces when god calls you because of the nature of your call there are core graces foundational graces that are connected to your call but in addition it is your responsibility through wisdom to outsource other dimensions of graces that are profitable for your own life and your christian adventure adventure for your sake and the sake of those connected to you when God called me there were certain graces he gave me among them favor was not part of them among them speed was not part of them among them influence was not part of them there were graces that came answered at the point of my call 
but the Spirit of God opened my eyes to see that God produced that limitation so that I will learn God on the journey to receiving those graces. Everything will not come at the beginning of your call. God will guide you. Something happens to you in pursuit of those graces. You will know God better. You will respect the formation of his economy better. If I had all the graces, I probably would not respect a Reinhard Bonke. I probably would not respect the sacrifice of a T.L. Osborne. I probably would not respect the grace of a Bishop Oyedepo or Papa Ia Deboye. But because of that limitation, God opens your eyes to see possibilities that are on earth but far beyond your current horizon. And then you pursue with hunger, you pursue with passion, you pursue without shame. Not human worship, not self-worship. But it is how he walks. He's invested in grace. His grace in men. They are called stewards of the manifold grace. Stewards, custodians, caretakers of the manifold grace. And when you seek and find, then you receive those graces. When God called me, the grace for long life was not part of it but i knew that i needed to live long not out of fear but because the demands of my assignment and the people connected to me will need it and i said i must take the responsibility of pressing pressing and when i found that grace i remember that time i returned to zaria in a hurry and i told my people i had received an impartation of that grace supported by the truths of scripture anyone can wish you long life but only the person who has lived long can actually impart the grace for long life did you hear what i said anybody i can speak to your life as a man of god and it will work but the person you meet who is 100 years old 120 if he says kneel down kneel down you can receive my prophecy later but kneel down 100 year old hands on your head you are joking do you know how many things you need to survive to be 100 years old and yet there are people on earth who are, are that old and some of the people around them don't have the grace till the people die they just know this man has lived long die now let's share your assets that's all they are seeing whereas someone else is saying god and the man who is 100 years old was a soldier that means he fought wars and yet he did not die he refused to die every time our father comes here that you see how i accord him a lot of respect the man has lived long he's about 86 now the oldest that I know, I've met a number, quite a number. The people who prayed for me were about 100, and you've heard the story, 136. 36, 136. When the wife of the man said she wanted to pray for me again, I said, pray, oh, please pray. The mama led me to a room, she said I should come. We entered and she was showing me the photos of her husband. That was the husband of her youth. And when it was time to pray, we knelt down. The woman took off her shoes, placed her feet on the ground, and was shouting there for the next 15 minutes. What do you think I was doing? Amen. It must be so. Because I'm going to fly many times in this wicked world. It must be so. Because there are arrows that fly by day, noisome pestilences, the wickedness of men as you rise. That grace. But I did not just go back to say, well, I fold my arms, an old woman has prayed for me. It doesn't work that way. So you go to scripture. Are, are you seeing how it works now? What has the Bible said? Now that the grace has come, how do I activate it? I shall not die, but live and declare. That's why I'm living and declaring. If you are not living and declaring, you may receive that impartation and something will still happen to you. Number two, I choose life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's why you see I said I would not call my name, myself that, that thing in that hip. Mm -mm. Because my words are not empty. I believe my words. So I will not be careless over it. 
not words my words they are not empty I know they carry power that is the reason why I'm telling someone you are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ I say it upon you you are blessed I say you are lifted I say help us come to you I say doors open for you in the name of Jesus Christ I say it again you are blessed you are lifted help us come to you oh let ministry be easy for you you access resources supernaturally please be seated impartation now look at me how many of you know that right from Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 2 and 3 the Holy Ghost was already revealed but do you know in spite of his presence every anointing that any man received in the Bible came through impartation a over 80 percent of the anointings that men received in the Bible came by transference from man to man and yet the Holy Spirit is the custodian of God's power are we together Abraham Isaac Jacob whether it's Joseph whether it's Moses and Joshua are we learning now whether it's Jesus and the disciples Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7 Paul calls them partakers of his grace partakers not partakers of my power partakers of my grace ye all are partakers of my grace a man can drink of the grace that God has given another like you bring your candle and you can light that candle from another person's candle and another one will not burn more or less you will not even know which one lit one that's how it works that's how grace works it is the reason why from the abundance of that which we have received we give freely because when you give freely it does not deplete your own no it doesn't if it depletes your own you have stopped keeping the principles that found that grace it is not because you gave it that it depleted the grace is inexhaustible provided you walk in keeping with the factors that sustain activate and multiply that grace now let me tell you something listen carefully I've taught you that the greatest hindrance and I want to say this the greatest hindrance that I have learned from scripture that stops men from receiving impartations is the heart condition of the people the heart condition of the people but more importantly a heart condition of dishonor please listen to me listen to me we're about to pray there's going to be a mighty impartation in this place now the heart condition listen please it is one thing for you to have proximity to a grace a vessel a steward of this grace but there are rules to drawing graces from people are we together now among them chiefest among them is your motif why do you want the grace that question why must be answered why do you want to receive the grace for prosperity why do you want to receive the grace for signs and wonders man of God why do you want the grace for influence why do you want the grace for crusades to pack full stadiums and theaters why if you cannot answer the question why regardless who is around you and regardless whatever spiritual activity i tell you it is a major leakage in your spirit if you cannot answer the question why when i stood at that crusade ground watching rain had bonke God sees my heart it was not just to make a name I was not just seeking to be a powerful man of God it was beyond power as I looked at that crusade ground I saw souls I saw people in need 
I have read many times that there are more people on earth and very few people, the percentage of Christians. I knew that God was looking for more laborers and it would be an honor for me to be a more effective witness, a more effective laborer. Everything I have desired from God in my life today, everything, and I stand before God, may he forgive me if I'm lying. There is nothing I have desired from God today or desired from vessels, stewards, that is just for personal gain, just to make a name. I want everybody to know that this man is anointed or this man carries favor. Every time I pray, I ask the Lord to purge my motif because I'm human. Who knows when maybe these things can creep in. By next week, we are traveling to the nations, taking the saving, healing, transforming power of Jesus. To what end is that? Just to show that the ministry is expanding? No. Listen. You need to ask the Lord to purify your motive tonight. The reason why many, many people cannot receive impartation, with all due respect, the reason why there are many pastors conferences you see across this nation and across Africa with sometimes jars of oil being laid on people, the reason why the percentage of those who receive versus the percentage of those who are there are so small is because in many cases, the motif of men is corrupt from competition to wanting a name to looking for fame and it's a very human thing this is why you must cry to God and say purify my heart search my heart why do I desire money is it to outshine others to look down on others to buy designers and say I'm a rich person why am I trusting God for influence why am I praying to be a captain over God's inheritance why do I want the healing anointing? So that they call you the next T.L. Osborne or the next Reinhard Bonke. And after that, then what? Why are you desiring the grace for prayer and supplication? So that you end the status of a prayer warrior. Why are you crying for the grace for revelation? So that you have respect to be sound in the word. No. Purify that motif. And then number two, you see, the motif part is between you and God. But honor is your own investment upon the vessel that carries that grace that you will receive. There are many people whose hearts are pure, but dishonor, dishonor. Again, I will charge the body of Christ. We need to manage dishonor. It is the reason why there is a decline in transference of graces. Let's not allow the carriers of these graces to die and go with their graces and mantles because of sheer dishonor. Hallelujah. It is my conviction based on the principle Jesus taught that everyone who carries any potent grace should live at least 12 of his kind by the time he's going. Based on the model Jesus showed us, there were 12 apostles, even though one was a son of perdition, but at least that model of 12, it is, it is my personal belief that anyone, particularly ministry, that by the time you serve and you are living, Everybody here and there can receive pieces of you. But people that you invest that grace, if you can stamp that investment of the Spirit upon your 12, then you have done a great job. But we hardly find that 12, as simple as it sounds. Mention 12 Reinhard Bonkers for me. Mention 12 TL Osborns. I'm not talking of staff who worked with him. I mean people who embody that grace. Mention 12 Elishas for me. Only one. There were many sons of the prophet, but there was only one Elisha. Do you know that there were many other apostles? The Bible seems to be silent about their own exploits. Why did they become so silent like that? Why are we just talking of Peter, James, and John? What of the remaining? 
they were not notable enough. I know Bible history captures some of their exploits, but some of them were shockingly silent, yet mentored by Jesus. Let me tell you this. If God grants you grace to be under a very anointed man, your prayer every day should be, Lord, help me conquer dishonor and purify my heart. Are we together? Help me conquer dishonor and purify my heart. Till today, till tomorrow, every time God grants me the grace to stand before people who are higher carriers of grace than me, world over, my heart is panting, panting to honor them. Pant my eyes does not even care whether you say this one has limited whatever. That is none of my business. My eyes is sent like a flint. There is treasure that is locked up within them. It is not human worship. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, if you never understand this, you will not rise old. You will not rise at all. You will be stunted shamefully. There were times before we started doing crusades to this degree. There were certain ministries, and I'm saying this not to brag because I'm, I'm teaching you secrets. I would sow into certain ministries, sow into certain mighty meetings that did not even concern me. Make sure that my seed was part of it to honor Jesus and in honor to that grace. Our world today is full of people not doing anything and yet talking about people who are making waves for the kingdom. It is an attitude if we don't change, we are going to go down the drain. A Billy Graham, a Renhard Bonke, who can speak over 20,000 people, 50,000 people, 10,000 people. It would be foolish to say crowd does not matter. You are joking. At a governmental level, when you hold a program of that magnitude, it registers the value of faith in nation building. There are certain decisions that can no longer be taken because there are evidences. 